Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Make sure that you're very comfortable in your bed so that you can relax as you listen to the story. Try and be still and quiet and that will help your body to slow down and get nice and heavy and sleepy. Heidi, Cherry and Vea were swimming in the deep blue sea. They were having a deep blue sea adventure. They were no longer cats. They weren't mermaids, they were purmaids. Each one of them had a purr tail. Heidi's was grey with stripes. Cherry's was long and bright orange and red and it looked like it had flames all over it, just like her fur. And then Vea's was sparkly silver tail with flashing lights all over it that twinkled in the deep blue sea. They were diving down very, very deep. They were below hundreds and thousands and billions of tons of water, swimming with their friends, the dolphins. Bubbles, puddles and scruffles. Bubbles, puddles and scruffles were very fast. But when Heidi Cherry and Vea were permaids, they were just as fast. They were having a race. Who could get to the coral castle that lived deep underneath the ocean the fastest? The coral castle was at least half a mile away, which would normally take you quite a while for a normal swimmer to get there. But these guys were super fast. Cherry said, Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm going to count to three and I'm going to say, On your marks, get set. And then I'm going to say, Go. Oh no, I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to say, Go. No, which one's bestest? I think if I say, On your marks, get set. Go, that one's bestest. Right, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Everybody get ready, I'm going to count to three. No, no, I'm not going to count to three. I'm just going to say, on your marks, get set, go. Right, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Okay, everybody line up. Wait a minute, we need to think about this before we start. Who is going to win what if they win? And who is going to do what if they lose? Heidi said, everyone gets um, an undersea food party if they win. Ooh, said Cherry, that sounds fun. Vea said, mm, me thinks everyone could come back to our house afterwards and we could do like a princess party. Mmm, said Cherry, that sounds really fun. Bubbles said, maybe if we win... We could show you a secret place underneath the ocean that you've never ever seen before. Ooh, said Cherry. That sounds even more exciting. That sounds very exciting. In fact, that might be worth losing for. We'll see, we'll see. We're going to try our best and we're, and, we're, and, we're, and, we're, and we're going to race. And then, oh, wait a minute, what happens if we lose? What we're going to do if we lose? Scruffles, the dolphin said. If we lose... We will clean the ocean. We'll swim around as much as we can, collecting plastic. And then once we've collected all the plastic, we'll put it on the island over there. And then hopefully someone will come and collect it off the island. Cherry said, that's a very conscious good idea. Good idea, Scruffles. Now, if we lose, what should we do, cats? Well, not cats, uh, permaids. What should we do, permaids? Freya said, me thinks we should do the same. Me thinks that that's a very good idea to clean the ocean. It always needs cleaning. There's all sorts of stuff floating about in the ocean that's not very good for all the creatures that live here. I, 
just recently got a plastic bag stuck on my tail and it would not come off the end. I had to flip and flap and do all sorts of funny swimming and I eventually got it off. But it's not very nice, is it? Cherry said. Right, if we win, we get to go to your secret special place underneath the deep blue ocean that we've never, ever, ever seen before. No, no, is that if we... Oh, I'm confused. Let's just do the race, okay? Let's just do it. On your marks. Get set. Go! Everyone started swimming very, very fast. The dolphins were in the lead at one point. Then the purr cats took over and they were in the lead. And then the dolphins took over again and they were in the lead. And then two of the dolphins, Bubbles and Puddles, fell behind. And Cherry and Heidi were in front. And then, at the end, somehow, I don't know how it happened, but they all managed to get to the Coral Castle all at the same time. Heidi said, It was a draw. What do we do when it's a draw? Cherry said, I think we should go to that secret place in the ocean that we've never ever seen before. I think we need to go there. The dolphins, all three of them, looked at themselves as if they were talking in some kind of secret code with their eyes. Shall we let them in? Shall we show them? Shall we not show them? Are the permaids special enough to see this secret place? And what's at the secret place? All in telepathic language, of course. The permaids didn't hear any of it. Then Puddles said, Okay, you can come. Follow us. Cherry looked at Heidi, very excited. Heidi looked at Veya, very excited. Veya looked at both Heidi and Cherry, very excited. And they started to swim behind the dolphins, following along. They were trekking through the ocean for quite some time. They passed loads of crabs, they passed shrimps, seahorses, they passed jellyfish, a big whale called Sally that they stopped and talked to for a while. Sally was always very friendly. It took a long time, and if they had to go there on their own, they think they probably would never remember because they were going under things, over things, around things. Then at one point they seemed to be going back against themselves and then forward again and then around again and then up, up, up towards the top of the ocean and then back down, 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 deep into the deep parts of the ocean. It was like they were going on a trek that they'd never been on before. But they hadn't, had they? They'd never been there before. Until, eventually, the dolphins stopped. They stopped at a big, under-the-ocean cave. It was dark and spooky-looking and very, very mysterious-looking. Jerry said, OMG, I don't think I want to go in there. It looks really scary and spooky and dark. I don't think I like it. Heidi, I think you should go. Yeah, yeah. Bea, yeah, yeah, you're brave. You, you, sh you just go. You go see what they want to show us. All three dolphins turned around and said, Don't be frightened. It looks scarier than what it is. Once you're inside, you'll be happily surprised. Cherry wasn't quite sure, but she followed anyway. The dolphins swam forward in through this dark, big, open space at the front of the cage that looked like a big, open mouth. They disappeared into the darkness. The permaids followed. It felt like they were swimming in the dark for about 10, 15 seconds. But those 10, 15 seconds felt like two hours of being super scared. They could barely see anything. They were just following the current in front that the dolphins were creating from their swimming. And then they stopped. There was a white light underneath the ocean coming closer and closer towards them. Then, all of a sudden... They heard this big, Oh, hello, what are you guys?
guys doing here? I'm so glad to have the company. I've been alone for absolutely ages. The permaids were looking at the biggest, cutest, friendliest looking octopus that they'd ever seen. It was a purple octopus with pink and yellow dots all over it. It looked like a happy birthday cake or something. Puddles the dolphin turned around and said, This is Mackenzie the octopus. Mackenzie the octopus said, Well, hello! Pleased to meet you! Cherry said, Eh, uh, hello! Well, wow! Do you live here? This is such a nice place! Not really, she said to Heidi and Vaya. It's really scary. Yeah, you live in such a lovely place, don't you? Do you live here? Mackenzie the octopus said, I do. I live here all alone. This has been my special house underneath the ocean at the bottom of the sea for the longest time. And I really like it here. I like it because I'm left alone and no one bothers me. Unless I get lonely and I want some visitors. And then, luckily for me, Bubbles, Puddles and Scruffles come and visit quite often. Lovely, said Cherry. Right. Um, right then. Er, uh, Heidi, Bea, got anything to say? Bea said. It's very nice. Very nice, me thinks. Yes, me thinks it's very nice to meet you. And she did like a little curtsy. Heidi said, Pleased to meet you. My name's Heidi. They stayed with Mackenzie, the ginormous octopus, for the longest time. They had a cup of tea with her. What was interesting was, because she had so many hands, she could do so many things at once. It was fascinating. She was knitting with two of her hands. She was playing ball with another one of her hands. Then she made them all a cup of tea with another one of her hands. Are they hands? They're not really hands, are they? They're like long talons. And then she made them all a seaweed special, which was absolutely delicious. I don't know what she did, but she fried up seaweed and did something else with it, and it tasted absolutely wonderful. All at the same time. She was an absolutely amazing multitasker. Multitasking is when you can do lots of things all at once. And Mackenzie, the ginormous octopus, was one of the best multitaskers that the Pyramids had ever, ever seen. It was time to go home. They said goodbye to all of their under-the-ocean friends. Swam up to shore. Their mertails disappeared and dried away in the sun. They found themselves back in their cat bodies. Back in their normal reality. They went home, snuggled on their beds, and had the bestest night's sleep that they'd had in a very long time. They all happened to be dreaming about their new bestest friend, Mackenzie, the ginormous octopus. The end.